Welcome back, everybody, to episode 229. Today, we have another special guest. Stay tuned. We will be back after the short intro from our sponsors. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for tuning in with us today. I see that we have a few people in here already. Uh, we have another special guest today, my friend Jonathan Duquette. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's uh, my grammar, awesome. My grammar is horrible. So, founder, CEO of Go Nano, the future of protection. My man, Jonathan, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Really excited being here today. Yeah, me too. I'm glad. This is a good one. Uh, did a little bit of research on it. I think the first time that I've I met you, um, I think we spoke briefly at RoofCon 2023. My dad was was there and was very intrigued by your product. Um, he was telling me all about it. My dad's an engineer by trade, so things like this, you know, technology and and stuff like that. He he's very intrigued by that stuff. Um, but then I think our first real introduction was at when the storm this past winter in, uh, I think that was Dallas, Texas this year. Um, but, uh, since then I've noticed you're kind of blowing up and changing the industry. Why don't you start off by telling us like, what is go nano? Yeah. So basically go nano started five years ago. Um, I had a little bit of experience already in nanotechnology, but in a, another fields, and at one point, I was just walking the street and was looking at a roof. And I was like, why there's nothing that exists out there to prolong and protect roof, right? I knew already what, like how amazing nanotechnology was in other industry. And I was like, why it's not already in that industry? And uh, a lot of people were like, and, and yeah, I just started doing research around that. And I found a lot and a bunch of research from across the world about the asphalt pavement industry. And after that, I just use these research and translate that because basically an asphalt shingle is a little bit like asphalt pavement. It's really, really similar. So after, when, once you understand that, it's how can you bring that technology, but to really a large stream, uh, but like to roofing in general. And we started there with one simple research, uh, developed the product around that. But over the five, past five years, what we actually did is that we improved the product. So we did a lot of different variation over, over time. And that's why now we, we really think, and most people will say that, that we are the leading product in the industry just because with what we bring. And it's basically, it's not only like our competition where they are only using sore bean product uh, to rejuvenate the asphalt, right? Uh, it's good. We tested it. So we did tests with it. Uh, but what we found is that it doesn't really increase the impact resistance, the wind resistance, or the weather resistance. It's really just a rejuvenation process. Where GoNano, where we stand apart, is that, yes, we will rejuvenate it, but as well as adding more protection in general to an asphalt shingle. But not only that, to other surfaces like concrete, wood, metals, and we're adding more and more. Okay. Okay. So for those of us that may not know what nanotechnology is, what exactly is nanotechnology? That's a great question. So nanotechnology is just the science at the really, really, really small scale. So it's been used already to treat cancer, uh, saving life, right? What I like to say is that we're not saving life. We're saving roof and building material in general. Uh, it's just the way that it's done. It's that you can literally go and modify, for example, for a human, create modify the DNA, right? So for us, it's a little bit the same is that we modify the DNA of an asphalt shingle. For people that are tuned in and know what's uh, roofing, you know what's an asphalt shingle and SVS membrane. So it's two different products. One, it's a, it's a polymer uh, kind of at the end still with bitumen. So that's a little bit what we are doing. So we're changing an asphalt shingle to an SVS membrane. 
Okay. So what uh, what is uh, what did you say it was an SBF membrane? S- SBS. So elastomatric membrane. So what we install in flat roof. So or roll down asphalt, torch down asphalt, whatever. There's so many names to it. SBS is the the real name to it. So it's tiren butadien siren. It's like it's a polymer basically. Uh, but it's that's an asphalt product, but modified. So it's a little bit the same that we're doing. We're modifying asphalt shingle to become okay. kind of an SVS membrane. Okay. Okay. So what else can this product do? I heard you mention earlier, like you could, you know, apply it to, you know, wood, concrete and stuff like that. And so what, what, why would you want to do that? I guess, first and foremost, put it on wood or concrete or things like that, but not only that, but like, how would you put it on it? Yep. So basically every surface can be modified. Right. So um, a lot of people are asking, how can I do that with my wife? Uh, it's not we're not there yet. Right. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're still just in the building sector. But basically is that every surface can be improved. And that's that's the main goal for us is everything can be improved. Uh, for example, concrete. Right. Uh, that's uh, one of your questions. Concrete is it's a porous uh, material. Right. So it's going to water is going to penetrate inside. But not only that, it's chloride salt will penetrate in, inside of it, right? For everyone that's northern or really south near the sea, there's a lot of salt. And over time, when the salts gets in with the water that push that salts down, which is the chloride, at one point the salt will touch the metal, which is gonna create corrosion. Corrosion will expand and it's gonna break the, con- the concrete. For example, when we install it on, on concrete, what's gonna happen is that we stop that. We stop the chloride from it penetrating, but not only that, all and everything else, right? So if you drop uh, wine on your concrete, it's gonna stay clean. Uh, if water gets in, leaf gets in uh, on top of it, it won't stain your concrete anymore. So it's gonna stay clean. So there's the aesthetic for sure. Uh, the algae won't grow on it as well uh, anymore, but as well all and everything for protection of that concrete so that it doesn't expand and break over time so it's going to keep it clean uh but yeah that's that's the main wood same thing right what's aging wood it's moisture we're going to stop the moisture from penetrating uh that wood because the water won't be able to penetrate but it will still let the the the, the wood breed which for example other product like paint acrylic or silicone won't do right it's going to stop that from breeding which is going to create long term problem uh where our product will solve that Okay. Okay. And like, what's the life expectancy of something like this? Like once you put it on, like it, it, like, is there maintenance every 12 months or is it like a one and done and it's got like a 50 year warranty or or something like that? Yep. So every surface is different, right? So for wood, I like to say it's going to be three to five years uh, because it's fiber. Fiber doesn't, it's not the same type of uh, protection. For example, metal is going to be about five years. Uh, Same thing or windows or stuff like that. Why is that? Uh, what I like to explain is that for a full uh, roof, let's say 3,000 square foot, right? 30 square of roof, we'll probably install 50 liters of product, which is about, uh, I don't know, 10, uh, 10, 15 gallons of product that we'll install on that whole roof, right? If you want to do that for metal, you might only use maybe, I don't know, uh, something like two gallon of product max. Right. So there's a big difference. So once it gets what it's cool about asphalt shingle is that it can we can put enough product to create a really, really strong bond from the inside to the top. Right. Because it's not only at your surface level, we really penetrate and modify from the inside out. So we can put a lot more product, create a much more durable um, connection where, for example, an asphalt shingle is going to last from five to 15 years, depending on the age of the roof and the product that we're using, because we have different product. Concrete is going to be 10 to 15 years about. So every surface is different. And that's why we have different warranty for different eight for different product, but also for the age of the product that we're installing it on. Okay. Makes sense. And do you think that has something to do with, because I'm going to consider like wood being more organic. Okay. So the maintenance of wood compared to concrete do you think it's because of of obviously the the texture of the material but do you think it has something to do with like because wood's organic and concrete isn't necessarily inorganic 
it's inorganic. Yeah, concrete is inorganic. And great question. So there's a lot of people don't know about that. There's you have different product, right? Organic product and inorganic, and you have mm -hmm. a mix of both, right? Concrete, it's literally inorganic. That's why like 50 years ago, they were like, oh, we're going to put concrete everywhere. It's going to last for like hundreds of years. We won't have to do any maintenance. And now they're like, oh, no, we still have to do maintenance, right? Because even if it's inorganic, it's going to age. And there's there's going to be something that's going to make it age. Uh, but yes, wood is something that's really totally organic. It's going to age a lot faster. It's a lot more complex uh, product than some other products. Uh, but yeah, so the big problem with wood is that it's going to rot, right? So after that, you can, there's a lot of a company that you can pre-treat it, your, the wood, which is good, right? It's a chemical that they put in it so that it's going to, it's not going to age as much or it's going to reduce the aging kind of because it's outside. Um, but where it's different, it's that wood drink water, right? So it's just in its nature. That's how he, it grows, right? It grows with water. And now what we want to stop is the water penetrating that wood, right? Which is the opposite of like what the wood normally needs. It needs water to grow normally. So now we're asking, do the opposite of what we want. So that's why it's a little bit more complex, but that's why as well, once you go and you install, for example, a paint on wood, now you stop the wood from breeding. So it's even worse because now you... You stop it from everything. So what we say is that with our product, what is really cool is that we say stain it, right? Oil stain it or water stain it first. And after that, apply our product. So normally if you stain it, you we might have to stain it every year or two years. What is great with our product is, for example, you stain it first. And after that, you apply our product. Our product, nanoparticle are UV, uh, UV protection as well, right? It's like a big sunscreen that you put. So... We stop the, the UV aging, we stop the moisture aging, and we stop all of that, right? So that way, but still that wood will still breed, which is the main key and the most important thing here. Same thing for roof, same thing for concrete. The surface will still breed, which is really, really important. And yeah, that not a lot of people know. And that's why people put epoxy on their concrete floor, which is a really, really bad idea, uh, especially for long-term usage. It's cool. It looks good, but it's not a good idea, especially if you're in the north where there's a lot of melt of snow and uh, for a basement, for example, not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. No. So I heard a lot of good things there. Uh, it, you know, basically it's it's kind of like a I guess, for lack of better terms, a water repellent. It's breathable. Right. Yep. And it prevents oxidation. So there seems to be three three pros right there right out of the gate before i get to the pros and cons question but but what i found interesting was is when you were talking about concrete and in theory concrete you would think would last forever it does but it it also um gets damaged and and i think one of the biggest damaging factors in concrete is water Okay, especially yep. in the winter months as the as as ice melts it gets down there and then it refreezes and it breaks the concrete. It breaks a lot of things, right? Um, but what I think I'm hearing you say is, is if you apply it to the concrete, it's less likely to to allow the water to get into a crack, right? To to create more damage when the water gets down there and it refreezes and it blows, basically blows the concrete apart. Is that what I'm? Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah. So freeze cycle for sure is something that breaks concrete. But even if you're looking south where they don't have any freeze cycle, the concrete will still get damaged. The problem, the, the biggest problem of concrete is salt. It's mm. really, really salt. That's the chloride is the most, like, it, it's, it's the problem of concrete is chloride. It's not water. It is, but water is the problem because it's how the chloride get delivered down to the con in, inside of the concrete because without the water chloride cannot penetrate right so you need like uh something that will drive that that chloride down and down and down that's why it takes a lot of time to get to the ray bar right but as soon as it touched the ray bar that's where everything because the surface is going to get damaged with the freeze cycle but it won't get damaged really inside what's going to really damage your concrete slab or your like whatever your road it's really if the chloride touch the metal, 
And that's where Gonado will stop that, will stop that chloride from penetrating inside of that concrete. So it will never go down and touch that metal, which is okay. the most, and as well protect everything aesthetic, which is the surface where freeze to cycle will happen and where you're going to have cracks or it's going to like peel or it's going to crack a little bit at the surface level is going to stop that as well. Absolutely. Now it, it sounds like a, a very fascinating and, and scientific um, product that, that, that you're, that you've developed. Um, I guess what I was thinking, what was going through my mind was, is when you were explaining the, the water penetration, the breathable and the oxidation, and it almost sounds like it's like a liquid Tyvek paper, which is like a vapor barrier almost that would go onto, you know, uh, you know, a wall or a surface before the siding would, uh, be installed. But, uh, Okay. So now that's, that's fascinating. It, it really is because there's a lot of things here that, that I didn't know about yet. Cause I was kind of questioning it too. I was like, so how is this going to go up against, you know, a company, you know, those other companies that are doing the roof rejuvenation stuff. And we, we are actually a partner with a roof rejuvenation company as well and extending the life of, of shingles and shingles only. But what's unique about this is, is that it's not just shingles. It sounds like it's no, your decks, your steps, your, your, your patios and, and things like that. Is there, is there anything else that we can apply this to like vinyl siding, aluminum siding or anything along those lines or vehicle or, or like how far can this thing go? Yeah. So there's literally no limitation uh, because once you enter the nanotechnology realm, right, it's just molecule. And after that, it's just to make sure that that molecule can connect to the surface or whatever, penetrate and modify uh, that material. So there is literally no limitation. And that's why we've been growing really, really fast in the past five years, right? We started only with asphalt shingle. Now we have concrete. Now we have metals. And we have other product that's coming. One of our goal is that by the end of this year, we cover every roof surfaces. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, 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 like a lot of different, but our goal is like, hey, we want to protect all surfaces. And that's one of our goal. But going forward, so there's a lot of R and D, right? So that that that's what is cool. And that's what our dealer network really enjoy as well. Is that let's say, yes, that's really cool. You can sell rejuvenation for roof. But what about like their concrete and the number of time that our dealer is like, yeah, I'm selling the roof, but after that, I'm selling the concrete, I'm selling the fence, I'm selling pretty much everything. Now, you haven't only made money on one thing, you can make money on every other surfaces. So our goal at GoNano is how can we become the leader? Not And that's why the beginning was lead uh, the future of roofing and we change it to future of protection because we don't want to be only in roofing space. We want to be really the future of protection in general. Not only in roofing, we want to protect everything. And like if, for example, with businesses or big building want to come to us and, hey, I want my uh, my bricks to be protected. I want my concrete to be protected. I want my roof to be protected. Then our dealers network can just go out there and be like, yeah, I can protect all of that. And I'm your one guy to do all of it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's our main goal. Yeah, no, no, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. Well, how do you see this changing and or helping or hurting our and i'm saying our industry meaning the roofing industry um that's a, that's a good question but we we have like we are working from with brand new entrepreneur to people making 40 60 million dollars a year in roofing right so we have like a lot of different people and some people will say that right oh you're hurting the industry but the the truth is that the industry is, is changing and it can't work, right? It, it it doesn't work for me. In the past twenty years, we created more shingle ways than the hundred years prior to that, right? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that we are changing a full roof every three to four seven years, right? Because of hail storm. And now I know it's cool for the money, but it's not cool for the planet, right? Because it's not it's not the right solution long term because it takes two hundred to four hundred years to decompose. It creates a lot of waste for nothing, right? So our goal is not, hey, you're, you're not losing any money. Actually, you're going to make more money with GoNano than if you're not doing it. Because we are in a market where people are shopping around. They are looking 
at how can I get better? And if you can offer, and like a lot of a roofer, what they do is that, yes, they're going to go and pitch a roof replacement, They will, but they can say as well, hey, we can add five years extra to your roof. And in five years, when it's time to replace your roof, we'll just wave that fee towards your next roof or something like that, right? So that way they just create the confidence with the customer and they come with another solution that it's not $20,000. And you probably know, already know about that, but the insurance industry is changing and roof replacement through insurance won't exist. So our product is literally the only way that homeowner can protect themselves from that. Because we are the only product on the market that shows that we can turn a class one shingle into a class three to class four shingle. And that we can take a 13, 14 years old shingle and make it more impact resistant than a brand new shingle. So that's the data that we have, and that's how we want to protect the homeowners. So we are working for the planet, the homeowners, but as well, our dealers are making great money with it as well. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff that you just covered in there. I don't even know where to start here. Why don't we talk, <laughs> yeah, because you, you touched on so many different facets there, um, which were all really good you know, highlights and bullet points of of how great this product is, the cost savings, the you know, the, the earth savings, the, I mean, all of the, you know, the green um, product and stuff like that. So well, let's start with, I guess the cost of it. And, and I guess like, would do you see it? Okay. Let's start with cost first. Like, so what is it compared to like replacing a roof or any of the other roof rejuvenation products that are out there? So for us, we're selling our product to your dealership, right? We don't, we don't dictate the price that they will sell because in California, it's going to be more expensive than a small town, right? Uh, it, it just really depends. Uh, so I'll, I like to say it, it can start at like 90 cents a square foot to about $1.40 a square foot, depending on the product, because again, we have different product. Uh, so what I like to say, it can be like from 10 to 20% of the cost of replacing a roof. Uh, but you have the warranty that comes with it. If we are not like going for the five, 10 or 15 years, depending on the age, then uh, you'll get a credit on your next roof. So, which is really, really cool. Um, and we back and we've been in business for five years and we only had two people to come back, uh, two comebacks across 80 now plus dealers. And we only had two uh, warranty claims to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's a good good track record so far. I mean, I mean, especially with it sounds like from the amount of volume that you guys are doing out there. So, on a, on a retail model, so that's what I was thinking. You know, not necessarily like the insurance model. It sounds like it would be a good a good uh, component to add to you know your portfolio in in the retail model. So, having said that, like, is there a certain uh, life expectancy left on the shingles before you would recommend installing this? Like if, if there was like 60% life or is it 40% or doesn't it not matter? Just put it on. Doesn't matter if the roof is 30 years old. So that's a good question. So what we did, um, I think about eight months ago is that we launched GoNano Revive. So GoNano Revive, it's a different product. So before we only had Shingle Saver, Shingle Saver, it's like a hundred percent blend of nanoparticle, which is great. But as soon as you land on the older roof, if there's nothing living inside of that roof, what we found, and that was the two claim that we got basically, is that we installed that product on the roof that was a little bit too old at that time. And what happened is that because the nanoparticle can connect to something that it's not living anymore, right? There's nothing, it's already fully oxidized. It, it, it wasn't a good thing. So what we did is that we decided to launch GoNano Revive, which is made with bio oil but with the nanoparticle as well. So we are not only adding the oil loss of the roof, but we're adding the nanoparticle that connect that oil to the roof. And we have the data of that and the graph that shows like the difference between uh, installing only soybean oil or bio oil by itself and installing it nanoparticle because the problem with in only installing oil on the roof is that what I like to say is that over time, for example, put oil on your, on your hand and go wash it after right? It's going to wash away sometime, right? It's going to mm -hmm. take time. I know some company out there have better technology than other, but the, the, the big difference is that us, when, once we install that bio oil inside of the roof, because after that, it become hydrophobic, we stop the loss of the oil go, going down, right? So that's one great point of it. But as well, we are locking that oil and we are really connecting that oil to the roof. 
So since that we got this product, now we can go to like roofs that are literally 15, 17, 20. We have one guy that installed it, it, uh, it a 23 years old roof. He was like, I was just testing. We are not warranting any roof over 20 years because what we do is that we sell from Hawaii to Montreal, Canada, right? So we're selling everywhere and a warranty is the same for Hawaii to Montreal. So we had to, to figure it out uh at that point but he was like yeah I, I just wanted to go and test it out and the roof was really old 23 years old and he install, installed it and our dealer came back to us a, a week later and was like the roof looked like brand new it's crazy that's how effective our go nano revive product is right now on all the roof but after that not every roof can be saved right there's roof that can be saved if you have water infiltration there's no granules left on your roof and it's like don't don't do it right replace a roof and we'll install a go nano shingle saver on that next roof so that you will never have to replace it but if there's still a couple of years maybe we can give you maybe two three years sometime it's just enough for people that can save a little bit of money for that next roof so but yeah yeah well that was one of the thoughts that i had earlier when we were talking about the cost of it like 90 cents a square foot up to ranging up to uh you know dollar forty cents a square foot that's still less expensive than replacing your roof and especially being under the economic challenges with inflation president uh an election year and uh gas prices interest rates all these things that that we're fighting right now um as consumers right i'm sitting here thinking to myself that's why i i would i I asked you that question earlier because you know we we're in the business you know the business of people the you know people business today and and whether it's our people or our local communities like how can we help those that need a new roof because obviously we go up do do a repair and stuff like that and then sometimes there just isn't a band-aid big enough right is what i what i call it right you, you know there's just too many you know granule loss um storm damage what whatever whatever the case might be right you can go up there it sounds like you can go up do a repair um apply this product whether it's the revive whether it's just the straight up nano uh technology uh, particles that you're applying to this um it, it just sounds like it's a a good piece of arsenal to add to your you know your 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 arsenal a good weapon to add to your arsenal um if anybody let me let me just put this out there quick if anybody has any questions please do not hesitate to put them in the comments because i see there's probably about 20 or so people in here right now if if you're just getting on you know this is you know this is my friend jonathan with a company called Go Nano, and Nano is nanotechnology, which is not necessarily like a roof rejuvenation, but like like a water repellent, oxidation, um, deter. Um, just it, it it's a magnificent product um, so far from what we're hearing. So if anybody's got any questions about this, please please don't hesitate um, before yeah. we end, yeah. or even if you catch it on the on the replay, don't hesitate to, and then we'll put your website and everything in there as well before we get off here were you going to say uh, something yeah you touched something really really important you you were talking about repair right yeah and that's something that we are pushing our network to do more uh just because like a lot of roof that can be repaired because you know you start and you touch that first shingle and it's going to break and you have to replace half of the roof as soon as you, you you start doing repairs right but mm-hmm. what we found is again with our product going on to revive, go out there, do a treatment, and come a week later, and you'll be able to do a, a, a repair without any problem because you get back that flexibility, right? So you can literally take that shingle and apply it; it won't break. So that's the other solution that now we have is that or a homeowner have is that they can call their local Gonano dealer, go out there, ask for a repair. Right. So we're going to come install the product, do a repair and your roof still gonna, is going to be good. And a lot of people in the roofing industry that it, that I found is that they're like, oh, no, I don't do repairs because I don't want to go out there for a thousand bucks. Right. But the big difference now with GoNano is that, hey, you can go, you sell the treatment right for the full roof. So now you're going to make maybe three thousand dollars out of that plus the repair. So you just made four thousand dollars. You might net about 50% of 40, 50% of profit out of that, which you'll make more profit on that. You do two repairs like that a day, you'll make more money than replacing roof all day long. So, mm-hmm. and I, I think 
more and more people are aware of that in the roofing industry is that profit is more important than revenue, right? Because if you do $30 million a year, but you only have $500,000 at the end, it's not going well, right? You're still making money, right? But it's really stressful and one mistake can just break it out, break, break it all, break it all. Then with us is that it's smaller project, but you can do it them at scales, which bring a lot more revenue and profit and which make a lot more stability long-term. And you're creating that um, referral as well, because do one repair, you're going to get 10 referral. Do uh, a roof replacement, you might get one referral, right? So that's the main difference is that, like you said, you're out there to help people, you're going to receive a lot more. If you're out there just to make money, you won't receive much. That's that's the, the that's the main thing about life. Yeah. No, no. And I get that. You said a good, uh, a lot of good things there as well, too, you know, and, and some of the problem with this industry right now is, is, is what you said, you know, they, they look at the $30 million, but they're not really looking at their net profit. They're more so looking at the gross. And like you said, you know, doing a repair along with, you know, nanotechnology or the rejuvenation, the revive product that you have, it requires less resources. Okay. Yep. You, 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 less, less waste, less resources, less labor, less time, right? Less time. All that means, you know, profitability. And I don't want to turn this into like, you know, how profitable, you know, roofing companies are, how badly we're, we're gouging people. But that's, that's the problem right there is that we're not, we can't like it, but, and we are a for-profit business. Like we're, we're in business sure. to, to be able to support our families and, and those families that work for us and stuff like that. And it just sounds like a, a smart business move to, to at least, even if you don't go all in on it and this is all you're selling, right? If you're a roofing company, I don't know how many times that we come across the homeowner that will call us because we do have a service department. We do services every day. There's something that we've, we've adapted early on, like 15, 16 years ago, we started out, you know, doing service for whether it was new homes or existing homes or just, any homeowner in general, it's a big part of our, our culture and our company is to go out there and let them know that you don't need a roof today, right? Because we, we want to be your roofer. We don't want to sell you a roof. We just want to be your roofer. We want to be your family's roofer. We want to be your neighbor's roofer. Um, and this sounds like a little extra something because a lot of times we'll go out there, they can't afford a full blown roof, but they want us to try to repair it and get the, get the leak to stop now. But this sounds like a more, a more, uh, positive, uh, um, alter, not an alternation, but an alternative, you know, to like, okay, but we can extend your roof while we're here for 3,500 bucks. We can extend the life of your roof for the next five years, because a lot of people are like, I just need it to stop leaking because I don't think I'm going to be here for the next eight years. Right. Cause on yep. average, I think a person lives in a home for eight years. So it's like, okay, that's fine. We got this product. So the roof's not going to cost you 15,000 bucks. It's only going to cost you for a repair plus a revive. $3,500. You're going to get much more by being honest. Like, look, you don't need a roof today, maybe in the next five or 10 years, but we can extend the life of this for you. You're going to get more return, right? More return yep. customers. You're going to get more referrals. You're going to get better reviews out of just being honest and transparent. Like, look, we, you don't need a roof today. We can repair it and, or, and complement it with revive. Um, the other thing is too, I think Agatha has got a great question in here about, um, I think I can barely read it. Uh, let me pull my phone up here. No yeah. Problem. I think it was about a dealership or franchise or something oh, like that. And maybe, oh, if I go can ahead. add quick, if, yeah. if I can add quick uh, on just what you, you just said, and you go out there for a leak, right? What I'd like to say as well is that Gonano is an entrance for, 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 for roofers because mm -hmm. we are literally – putting the water down the roof, which is what you want for a roof, right? And the number of time that like when I started, right, I went out there to do to a roof and the person was like, hey, I have a leak. I was like, hey, you know, I'm not a roofing company because I, I was not right um, here. And I was like, but if you're not doing anything, you'll still have a leak. And what she told me is like, I, I, I called two roofing company to come and find the leak. They never found the leak. I came out there do an install after the winter i called her i was like is there any water that got inside of your house she's like no same thing for a flat roof that i did in quebec city it was like i or I, I asked two roofing company to come they never found the problem i installed the product two years after no water infiltration 
Now he, he sent an email to every of his customer, all people that own apartment complexes. Why? Because that's not the only thing is we rejuvenate, but we protect you as a roofer because we're going to make that water go down the roof. So we are solving and reducing a lot of risk out there as well. Mm -hmm. No, no, I love that. I love that a lot. I guess, uh, Agatha, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in today. She wants to know, is is GoNano selling as a dealership or franchise? Yeah. So thanks again uh, for for that uh, question. So we're a little bit different. Uh, we, we still call it a dealership because it's the main opportunity out there. Uh, the only thing that we do a little bit different is that we want you to test out our product before getting inside and buying, like, I don't know, a territories for $50,000, $60,000, right? Plus all of the costs. So the main goal here uh, for us is really get started. So what we call is that you can start as a reseller, authorized reseller. So you get a package. So we have three different package uh, ranging from fifteen thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars, but it's in product. So you literally just buy product from us, and then you get started. After that, if after six months it gets really good between us, then we'll just grant you a dealership for free, right? But our goal is that don't go out there and buy for fifty thousand without knowing if you like it, if you know if you're going to be good. Start just with a package. Start at pretty pretty much no cost because we're just you're selling you product. And after that, if you're good and you're buying a lot of product from us, then we'll, we'll put you as a dealer. And then you're, you're going to have a protected territories, a larger, and it's going to change a little bit. But yeah, that's a, that's a little bit the difference between us and the other people. We're not trying to make you buy in and something really big upfront for territories. Just start, get good with us, buy product, and we'll give it to you for free. Okay, so we're buying it directly from GoNana. We're not going yep. to ABC to pick it up. So there's no one two stepping it in between and marketing it up, marking it up. So we're actually ordering, going online, ordering it from you. It shows up in a week or two or three days. That's yep. great. Vic, Vic has a great question here. This this is a phenomenal question about pressure treated lumber. How long do you have to wait to apply the product to pressure treated lumber? So it's going to be about. Uh, 30 days. The, the, the main thing is that our product, right? It's not like paint. Paint, it's a little bit different or like oil stain, it's a little bit different. Our product pe- penetrate and remodify from the surface, right? Uh, after that pressure treated roof, uh, uh, wood, it's real different from one wood to the other wood and the type of pressure treated uh, wood. Uh, after that, we're going to help you whatever the wood that you, you're looking to treat. But normally it's about 30 days just because our product penetrates, right? And it modify. So it's not like paint or acrylic or other type of things that really needs to penetrate. Nanoparticle is so small that we can penetrate pretty much everything. So yeah, even brand new wood, we, we did it on brand new uh, pressure treated wood and it worked really well. And it's still working inside my mom place. It's been three years and the water still beat up. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Cause I know, especially with pressure treated, you got to wait a long time to stain it or paint it. You got to wait for it to fully dry out. And by that time, a lot of times it's almost too late. It's already twisted and warped and you know, what exactly what we didn't want it to do. That's why we purchased, you know, pressure treated lumber, but it seems like today that whatever they're using to preserve it has changed over the past decade or so, I guess, due to health purposes. And speaking of which, health purposes um, Wait, what, with- what, I, what i would like to say what i will suggest then instead of buying pressure treated wood just buy normal lumber stain it right away and saw gonano you're going to be more protected than uh pressure treated uh wood right right away i will there suggest that's that's the better solution the best solution yeah, that, and that's a bold statement uh you know to, to use regular pine board to build you know something outside exterior wise um uh, and to use your product that's 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 a bold statement so kudos to you for for believing in your product that much but getting back to you know the the pros and cons and and environmentally friendly like how how safe is it like is it is it organic is it is it safe for the homeowner's pets the the person that's applying it like is there extra precautions you have to put in place or is it is it pretty much all organic so basically sil- it, we are using nanoparticle of silicon right it's nanosilica silica is everywhere right it's in the ground it's been mined out so 
nanoparticle. So in 2008-ish, there was like a lot of people like, oh, nanoparticle is dangerous, uh, whatever. But after that, a lot of people did research and nanoparticle is already everywhere. It just, we didn't knew about it because we didn't have the technology to know that every everything that surrounds us is uh, nanotechnology based basically at, at, some, at some level. Um, so our product, there's nothing like, it's not cancer regenerative. Uh, we can sell in every state in Canada. Uh, so that's 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 a first for that. After that, what I like to say is that once we do an installation, right? Sure, uh, shingle saver is a little bit more high in um, petroleum substance, just because we have to use organic solvent just to penetrate because we're going on something organic. So we can't use water because we're going on something organic. So we need the, 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 the nanoparticle need to be suspended inside of something organic because we're changing from organic to organic phase. Anyway, I don't want to go into the science part of it, but yeah. there's a little smell to it. So we're just saying to people, close your, your window. Uh, what I like to say is that I'm like the best example. I, I, I got this product in my eyes, in my nose, in my mouth, pretty much uh, everywhere on me because I did all the tests right at the beginning. I was the one doing, I did 100 and 100 in insulation. I tested a lot of different systems, some system that broke in my hand and started splooshing everywhere. Saying that, I, I, I had problem where some product leak on the ground and it never kill a plant. It never kill a grass, right? It never did any of that because the pH of the product is neutral. Nanosilica is everywhere. For sure, when we are doing insulation, we're asking our, our guys to put a chemical mask because they're doing maybe five to six, seven insulation a day, right? Even if you're painting, you're doing concrete, please put a mask on. Stop the manly-ish type of things that, oh no, I'm just going to do it. I don't need a mask. No, put a mask on. It's important. It's still a chemical. So put a mask on, but for the homeowner, the pet around, there's no problem because even 15 minutes after the installation, there's going to be no smell, no anything. Uh, it, and we're not doing insulation when it's windy, right? Because we're just going to lose product. <laughs> the, the cost, the, the, the highest cost in our business is the product. So we won't do a, a, an insulation if it's really windy and it's going everywhere. We want the product to land on that roof or on that concrete. So now there's no literally no risk. Uh, and we've done a lot of tests. We've been looking for me, it was really, really important, right? Because I don't want to put something and uh, be uh, in the long term like, oh, uh, I created this and that. So that's why as well, as a company, I think we're the only company with that much data. Because for me, it was so important that I, I'm selling something that I'm 100% confident about. And that's why we're still doing data and research right now, five years later. And we probably saw us like in front of people inside of shows doing L impact tests as well. So we're out there and we're doing always more and more tests just because we want to prove people and we stand behind, behind every claim that we are doing. Mm -hmm. So, so with all your testing and stuff like that, and, and how much of this has been applied you know, obviously some of it's getting into the gutter or going down the downspout and going out into the yard, like the day of it doesn't. Nope. So, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. But no, because what if because it did? It really, is, it killing, is it killing the grass or, or anything like it, you have to be cautious and spray things down after you're done or while you're doing it? Does there have to be somebody on the ground spraying a hose on people's flowers, the neighbor's flowers because of, you know, overspray? So, so if, if, the water, if the product goes to the gutter is because you're applying way too much product and it's mm -hmm. not good, right? Because the big difference is that our product, right? It's nanoparticle based. At one point, you don't need to oversaturate it. So what I like to say is that as soon as the, the, the and the big difference with our product is that the shingle want to drink it, right? It like you apply our product, you literally see it penetrate right away. It's not like other product because it's only oil that it go down the roof, right? Most more, more like uh, other company are using soybean oil. Soybean oil don't like asphalt, right? So it just, it's going to go down and it doesn't penetrate. The difference is that our product wants to go inside. It wants to penetrate inside of that shingle. So there might be some little in the gutter, but it will never go down to the ground. I've never seen that. And if you're doing that, is that you're installing way too much product and you're just losing money uh, because you don't need to apply that much product to to so that it works. 
But again, the only problem that we might have, right, the overspray is that if you're applying on a roof and it lands on concrete, if it lands on concrete, what's going to happen is that, and it dries because it's really hot out there. When it's going to rain, people will just see the place where the product land, the water won't penetrate, right? But that's the worst that can happen. Uh, it happened to us back, back in the days. What you do is just you go out there and you treat the other section of concrete. You might even be able to charge the customer because he's going to be like, oh, it works really well on concrete as well. Yeah. You want us uh, to do it on all of your concrete? Yes. Good. So we're going to do the rest of your concrete. But that's, that's, I've never seen anything else. We never killed any plant. We never had any of those problems. Never. Okay. Oh, wow. I have a bunch of questions. All right. I'm sorry these are all over the place because as you're speaking, I'm coming up with more questions. And by the time you're done, because I'm still, I'm trying to stay in tune with what you're saying. Um, I can only remember a few of them, but what, when you were talking about the concrete and the roof and the gutters and stuff like that, I was thinking about ice damming. Okay. Yep. Um, what, what is the pros and cons of like, because up here we're in the Northern climates, like, does it create more ice damming? Does it alleviate ice damming? Does it help the, does it, does it, is there a danger created because the, the snow is going to slide off easier? Give us that synopsis. Sure. Uh, do you know what's the difference between hydrophobic and waterproof? I don't think so. Okay. So waterproof is what you have when you're talking about uh, acrylic, silicon, epoxy, right? It's a surface something. It's what you're going to put in your pool so that it retained the water, right? So it retained. The difference is that hydrophobic, right? It's like what I like to explain is take two magnets, put them on the same pole and try to stick them. What's going to happen? They want to repel each other, right? They don't like each other. That's hydrophobic. So we don't like water, right? So we don't stop water. We don't like water. That's, that's, that looks like small, but it's a big deal, right? Because if you stop water, then you stop breathing as well, the breathability as well. So, but if you just don't like water, you push the water out. So that's the main thing. Um, when it comes to winter ice damp, right? I'm from Quebec. That's why I have a weird accent. I'm French Canadian, right? Uh, but the, the, the main thing is that that's where I did all of the testing, right? That's where we started. And what we've been able, and we have video on our Facebook page and YouTube video, and we have dealers in the Albany area that he did like, if, like at the end of the winter. And the biggest problem is that when it freeze at the bottom, right? then the water gets and push up. The big difference is that because it's hydrophobic, the, the ice doesn't like to stick that much to the shingle because the problem right now is that people think that a shingle is fully waterproof. It's not, right? The water penetrates inside, it frees, and, it, and it's how it breaks at one point because all the weight of that ice is just going to shear that, that shingle. The main difference now is that we don't like the water. So we don't let that water penetrate that shingle. So it's still going to connect just at the surface level. But when it melts, what is great is that the water will just pass between the shingle and the ice and go down to the gutter. It won't push up. That's how we save people's. And like when you were asking, uh, when we were talking about water infiltration, that's one of the way that we solve people. Water infiltration is true solving the ice dam problem. Yeah. Okay. No, it sounds good. It, it, no, I, I like that because I was sitting here and wondering to myself, like how, what would it make the, when, because ice is going to form regardless, it gets cold enough, ice yep. is going to form. So yep. you know, yep. it, does it create a, a, a more uh, slippery surface because now that the ice isn't sticking to it. So would you recommend someone pr probably putting up snowbirds, whether it was a metal roof or an asphalt roof? Would you, so would you, so the only time that it's slippery, it's when you do the installation and the part, so the time that it takes to the particle to penetrate inside of the shingle, right? It's the only time that's slippery, let's say 15 minutes after that you did that, that coat, after these particles penetrate inside, it do the modification. So the main thing about any of our product, the surface will still be the same. You touch it, it's going to be the same thing. So it won't be more slippery in concrete. It won't be more slippery on asphalt shingle. It won't be any of that. So you, 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 there is, it changed nothing, right? We changed the molecular structure of the shingle, not the surface. We don't modify the surface. What's happening at the surface is just the result of what's happening inside of the shingle. 
Wow. Okay. I, I, I love this podcast because, you know, it's called Behind the Tool Belt because normally we talk a lot about, you know, personal improvement and, and, and the person behind the camera. And, and what's cool about this is also products. We bring people on, they talk about the products, but also like the what's behind the product kind of thing. And I feel like we've covered a lot of you know, the, 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 the pros and, and, and things like that. And you've mentioned some of the cons too. It could be a little more expensive um, in, in that it's not an organic, but, but it's not necessarily a hazard to your health either. Um, and what, when you were talking, and one of the reasons why I was asking this question was because, you know, growing up in the construction industry, you know, we've, I painted, I stained, I've, I've, I've used paint thinners. I've used, you know, all different types of solvents that are very, very, very hazardous to your health period. If you're, if inhaled, killing brain cells to, to making you feel dizzy, you know, uh, carbon yeah. monoxide poisoning, all these things over the years that we've done. So it really doesn't sound like, it sounds like it's less dangerous than that alone but like no one's talking about like the dangers of paint thinner the the dangers of painting you know a closet interior wise and and you know proper ventilation and things like that you know and this is the thing too we most of our stuff is exterior wise so you're outside right obviously yeah. you got to use it with caution right you know you yeah. suggest you know using a mask well because it, there there's a smell to it right you know and and with anything in the construction trade we should be thinking safety first Right. But it doesn't sound like it's killing the neighbor's pet. It doesn't sound like it's killing people's azalea bushes and, and things like that. So it, it sounds like it's fairly environmentally friendly. But I guess the, there's there's two million dollar questions to me, I think. And, and, and those of you out there listening, one, I think his name was Houston Painter asked, like, what are what are the insurance companies saying about this product? So, you know, one of the big thing about us is that like a lot of people are like, why do you have that much research, right? We have over half a million dollars in data and research. The reason is that we are the only company out there that's been approached by the Institute Bureau. We've been approached by insurance company and we've talked with them, right? And they're like, here's what you need, like a test. You need that test, that test, that test, that test. We went out there as a startup, right? And it's like $40,000, $60,000, 120000 200,000, like it, it gets a lot of money to get started, right? Just to get started and being out there. And what's funny, it's like six, seven months ago, we're like, hey, we have, we have all of this data. Like, are you ready that we start like talking about doing a deal? And they're like, yeah, you know what? What we're looking to do is just going out of the roofing industry. We just don't want to insure roof anymore. And mm -hmm. we're like, Oh wow, that's like that's a hook, right? That's that's that we've been investing all of this money, creating all of this data, which is good because we still have it, but mainly we created that for the insurance industry. They're not saying that they are not interested anymore. It's just they don't know where they are going right now. Nobody knows where they're going. Like a lot of insurance companies are just looking to drop roof in general. Like I went to uh, in um, uh, in Texas in um, well uh, Austin Texas uh, to the Texas Department of Insurance to talk with the people out there right du during a earring just because I was like I want to know what's happening right now in the market right and that's what we do at GoNano is that we're not just talking about we're going out there and I, I I went out there and I spoke with them right away and and I was like. What's going on? And what she told me, she was like, we will never let any insurance company to stop insuring roof in Texas. But what we are seeing right now and what we allow them to do is that what's going to happen is that we're going to create two different policies. You're going to have one policy for your house and you're going to have one policy for your roof. The policy for your roof is going to be, uh, the deductible is going to be about two to 4% minimum. So it's going to be about 15, like, let's say you have a $500,000 house, it's going to be about $15,000 as a deductible. But not only that, what they're creating right now is that they're decreasing the value of your roof on 10 years. So for the first five years, after five years, let's say you, you, you claim the worth of your roof only worth 40, 50%, but you still have that 15,000 deductible. So it costs you literally more to use your insurance than to go and replacing it, replacing it yourself. 
that's what's going on right now in the market. That's where we feel that we still are in conversation with insurance industry and insurance company. It's just like, it's going to be something that's going to take just more time until everything gets more uh, flexible. But again, yeah, we are dealing, insurance company likes us because we solve the problem of water infiltration, L resistance, wind, right? And we increase the lifespan of roof, right? So that's why they love us because we are the only company with all of the data that showed that we can save them money. But now they are looking on how can they not, how to not spend money in the roofing industry. So that's mm -hmm. what they're looking to do right now. So we're just in the middle. That's why now we, we switch our focus and we're a little bit more on the consumer side now. And we're just trying to educate people and consumer that, hey, that's your new insurance. GoNano is your new insurance to protect you and so that you don't have to spend freaking $15,000 in a year or so. Yeah, no, that's good. So we're, we're getting, we're running short on time here and I, I know oh. you're very busy. So I, I got two more questions. One, one leading to the, the, to, uh, my, sorry. Um, one relating to what you were just talking about. So what you're saying is, is the insurance companies, are they identifying what this product is? And they look at it and be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. What if they came out and they said, look, we're not going to insure your roof anymore because we've heard this before. Um, because it's at its life expectancy. So we're going to drop you until you get a new roof put on. So have you had a situation where, you know, uh, an insurance company came out and was like, oh yeah, go nano. It looks like the roofing contractor came out, did, did the repairs that were needed, plus also added the revive to it. Have you had any? Yeah, so it, right now we are working more like at the uh, local type of uh, system way where, and that's what we are, teaching and helping our dealers with it's like approach these insurance agent in your neighborhood explain to them what's the product show them the data right and we had a lot of them that been able to write it off right so, so that insurance company are like okay i'm gonna add more life you don't have to replace your roof it happened in colorado it happened in, in florida it happened in texas it happened in multiple places where we've been able to show with all of the data that the insurance company or the agent was comfortable at saying, okay, we're going to extend your policy. So mm -hmm. we, we got that right after that, it's really difficult to do it at a state level. Uh, for example, in Florida, but right now they are changing a little bit where, Hey, if we do an inspection and now we claim that the roof and that's, what's cool with revive is that the roof's going to look as good as a brand new roof. And it's going to actually even perform better. And that's why, like we had a lot of problem with big institution. I cannot say their name on that podcast, right? Where we wanted to do testing on aging shingle, but they were like, no, we can't do that because the shingle manufacturer don't want us to do that because they don't want us to prove that a shingle after five to 10 years, is not as effective. So we did it out on a, with, uh, it's called Green Center Canada. And uh, we did a test with them. We tested like from brand new shingle to 15, 17 years old shingle. And that's the data that we got is that we can take that 13, 14, 15 years old shingle and make it as good as a brand new shingle. Yeah. So this is a great segue because my last million dollar question for you was, is what is shingle manufacturers saying about your product? Like, are they stating like uh, it's going to void the warranty if you use this product or are they saying, no, use the product because we want you to extend the life of the shingles because it just makes us look better. <laughs> uh, they will never say that uh, yeah, one of the problem uh, I know some people don't like when I say that is that like asphalt shingle manufacturer if you go back in the 70s there was like 180 manufacturer of asphalt shingle right nowadays there's like 46 major one and so how do you come from 180 to 46 it's because they bought the whole competition once you bought the whole competition and you own the monopoly how can you make more money? It's not by making something better. They are all publicly traded company. The only way that they can make more money is to make money to the shareholder and not helping their customer, right? So they don't want, they, they want you to replace your roof every seven to eight years. I don't put all of them in the same basket. There's some company out there that are, are really looking on how, to create, how can they create a better shingle. Uh, but yeah, no, but most of them will, they don't want to extend the life length of your roof. What we say is that we're we're having a more a better warranty anyways. 
homeowner don't really like 90% of homeowner don't have any warranty on their, uh, on, on their, their roof anyway, because there's so many ways that they, they, they found. And it's why it's like a six paper, uh, six page, uh, warranty. So no, it, m- most of them don't want to, I, I, I mean, some of them talked with us, they were like, that's a great product, but generally speaking, they don't want shingle to last that long. That's, that's the main thing. Well, of course. I mean, things are only built to last for so long. And that's that, unfortunately, that's a big part of our economy. Yep. Right. Is things breaking, right. Whether it's from a mechanic yep. or, or car dealerships, right. Like things, cars and things are only built so long anymore. They're not built to last, but that's, that's a huge part of our, our economy today. And that's whether it's right, wrong or indifferent, unfortunately, I mean, that's, that's what created our, our, most of our economy anyhow, but, but, but what you're saying is, is nobody said like, don't put this on our shingle or else it'll void the warranty. Like, does anybody, does a homeowner or a contractor, do, do we have to be concerned that it may affect the warranty? Like, so, let's just say somebody so, put a lifetime GAF roof on their house 15 years ago. And we all know a shingle, unless it's properly installed with proper ventilation, intake, exhaust, you know, all those things, pro- proper insulation in your attic is going to affect the life expectancy of your shingle, right? So like yeah. if, you, if you get 15, 20, 25 years out of a 30 year architectural shingle, you're doing good. You probably had a good contractor or home builder that built your home to begin with. So is anyone, has anyone said like, no, don't use this product on, on our shingles or else it's going to void that warranty for the contractor and or manufacturer defect. So we, we work with a lot of different attorney and lawyer across Canada and the U.S. And um, what they told us, right, they went over all their warranties, right? They will say, claimly, they will say, like, if you write to them, they will say, yeah, it's going to avoid your warranty because it says that. Uh, we. But the thing is that now us as a company, like, we could fight it. We don't want to to be honest, because we're not looking to spend millions of dollars just to fight that type of claim. And we'll just have the, the homeowner at the end, right? And we'll, we'll just make it clean. Uh, that's our main goal as a business. But literally, we have half a million dollars of data that shows that it only improves, right? Mm-hmm. And part of their warranty is like, it doesn't, it, it says that it doesn't affect the shingle. But it doesn't really affect, it improves actually the shingle. So it could be, we could fight on that because we actually have that shingle and they can't, they, they, there's literally no way on how they can say the opposite of that because we have the data that back it up. So that's the main mm-hmm. thing with us is that, and that's why we're creating all of this data because if they will have to come to us, but again, our goal is that a, and most homeowner knows it, right? When they approach us, it's not because they think that they're going to get $10,000 from whatever uh, shingle manufacturer because they know they won't receive any money, right? Or if they receive any money, it's going to be like $800, $1,000, $2,000. But it's not enough when a cost of a new roof is like $30,000. So you're better off installing that $3,000 product and getting that five, 10 years extra than trying to wish and hope that someone's going to come down and give you money. Uh, and I, I don't really believe in that. So, but that's a... Yeah. Uh, no, and, and I, I didn't mean to, to to drill you on that question, but I'm sure someone at some point in time is going to end up asking yeah. you that question. And, and I think it's a fair question. 100%. But as you were speaking at, at, on your defense on this is, you know, if somebody had a roof installed 15 years ago and they're looking to to use your product today because it's it appears that the life expectancy of their roof has has shortened for some reason, that usually goes into how it was installed, the application to begin with. And the sad reality of it is, especially with our with our industry, the chances are of that same roofing contractor still being in business, circling back to our earlier conversation of, of being profitable, the chances of them still being in business is slim to none because 80% of the roofing contractors in America go out of business in the first four years. You, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to bring that point up. So if you would have to like battle somebody or, or, or us contractors selling this product, you know, explaining to a homeowner, you know, because part of a repair on a roof is not just going up on the roof, but it's also inspecting the attic space, looking for, you know, penetrations that shouldn't be there or a dryer vent that's just venting into your attic space. 
poor intake, no exhaust, gable vents are probably the worst thing that you could probably put on a house. You know, those things, educating the homeowner, actually getting in there and correcting the issue before you do the repairs, before you apply, you know, um, your, your product, go nano, the, the shit, I can't think of what, uh, relevant, not relevant, uh, Hydrophobic? No, 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 no. The, the, your, your product. I had a, I'm losing my train of thought here for a minute. The not reinvent, but the revive, revive. revive. Yeah, yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. I couldn't, you know, before applying it's the revive product on it, they, they should be actually fixing the cause of why your shingles are only lasting 15 years to begin with. And I just wanted to throw that out there because, you know, that, that's the problem. It, it's the preparation before we install the roof or, or go out. And when we do an inspection, you got to go out and actually inspect. Why is your roof 15 years old? Or why do you have 75 or 150 years of layers of shingles on a 75 year old house? And the chances are it's because of poor ventilation, poor insulation. You don't have any attic insulation, right? So educating the homeowner, educating the consumer, educating the contractor, First and foremost, because everybody just wants to go out and put another layer of shingles over top of another but, layer of shingles. That, that's that's a good thing. And like I, I like yes, the insulation is really important, but the product is not the same. Like and and I've seen it, I've tested it, I've seen it in the lab. Like you know, like a bundle of shingle thirty years ago was weighing one hundred and twenty pound, and that same bundle now weighs eighty pound. But or mm -hmm. even seventy pound. But what's funny is that that shingle is thicker than the one from thirty years ago. Why is that? Is that shingle nowadays are so pre-oxidized because it's full of air. Like you literally, you go on an FTR spectrum and you, you look at the, the molecular structure of a shingle. You see the spike of air inside of the shingle is crazy because it's so pre-oxidized. And what I like to explain is that. You, you install a brand new shingle, it's like a 10 years old shingle from the past that you just install. And that's why you're putting a brand new roof. All the granules are going down. It's like there's granules everywhere because you're not sticking because it's so oxidized that it just go down. And you can install a brand new paper, a brand new shingle that might be in, in, in the yard for five years, free storing like all of these years. But after the pro plus all the, 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 the free store cycle, that's why like I like to explain, and even on a brand new product, a shingle saver, what we found is that even a brand new shingle might need some oil, not like as much as a brand, like uh, as a revive will do, for example, or like a full soy uh, product on the brand new shingle. But what we found with our data is that even a brand new shingle, and that's why right now we're modifying our uh, new uh, shingle saver product, is that Basically, what we found is that once we we're adding a little bit more oil, even on a brand new shingle, we're helping it. And mm -hmm. but with all the nanoparticle, because we stop that oxidation process, we reduce that, and that's where it's really important. But yeah, yeah, no, and that it, you're the product from from what I'm gathering from you and the confidence that you have and the bold statements that you made, which I don't blame you because you're confident in your product, you stand behind your product. Here you are on live Facebook. Um, you know, where it, it's live, raw and uncut. And you said it, you, everyone heard you say it. And unfortunately, or fortunately here it is on the internet now for life. Um, but you know, it, from what I'm gathering in the research that I've done and, and I saw geo, um, even posted in there where, uh, Matt Mahala was, was doing, you know, the, the impact test on it that with the hail gun and stuff like that. And, and obviously the difference between a treated and untreated shingle, the, the fibers, you know, didn't pull apart or get become exposed because the granules stuck better to the shingle. So, you know, with your research, whether, you know, with Matt Mahala and, and his, his talent and, and experience of, of hail and insurance and stuff like that to, from, and to your experiences and, and your testing that you guys are doing now, it sounds like it's a great product. Um, I know Vic put how to get a hold of you guys in there, the, the, the www.gonano.com. So if anybody's interested, but other than that, is there any place else somebody, if they, if they wanted to use your product or see the reviews or, or, or get um, some testimonials from anybody, where would they go to find that stuff? So we have, uh, we just uh, launched a new page, which is gonanodealers.com, or you just can go to, to gonano.com and click on the dealer's link and it's going to land you there. On that page, you have dealer testimonial. We have like tons of testimonials as well from dealers, uh, from roofing, 
roofing company, but as well as with homeowners. Um, and yeah, you can just go there. We have calls five days, a week, uh, five days. Uh, yeah. Monday to Friday, we have different calls, group call, just come in. Uh, we have from one to 20 people on these call and we're just having a chat, a blast, and we just exchange about the product, how it works, we're diving in a little bit more. And after that, if you're interested, we are gonna book a second call with you and talk a little bit more about the product, how it goes and what's the profit potential and all of it. Uh, but yeah, Fantastic. just go on GoNano or if any information, info at GoNano.com, uh, it's another great way on how to reach awesome. us gonano.com so check it out guys uh we're gonna wrap this episode up we're about an hour and 12 minutes into it thank you for your time jonathan thank you for everyone for tuning in on your lunch break or wherever you are in the world today don't forget to like love and share and oh one more thing before i get off here <clears throat> we do our i should have said this <clears throat> announced this earlier but our annual fourth annual food drive of the year is june 27th uh, between now and then we will be collecting food or of or any other organization that wants to participate and put a box out there and have your team gather food up it's a great way and we'll take uh, monetary um, donations as well and we have and we will have on our website i'm sure our cash app so if you want to pay by pay by check cash app donate food bring the food here or the day of the 27th you can stop in at the well and join us and help us unload all the food that day uh june 27th between the hours of two and four at 24 south penn street york pennsylvania so i just wanted to give that a quick plug because i want to get out in front of this because i feel like last year we waited to the last minute to get this out there so fourth annual food drive thank you guys for tuning in jonathan thank you for your time thank you for your expertise and thank you for what you're doing for our industry you guys have a great day thank you very much diane thank you for everyone that tune in and uh thank you very much for the opportunity of uh, being on your podcast today it was amazing thank yep Take thank care. you brother